Hi Kirill, my name nice is Albert. You. Very nice to meet you. Nice to see you here on Slush event in Helsinki. Yeah, thank you. Skolkov is very known in uh, post-Soviet and Russian countries, but uh, unfortunately in Nordic countries it still uh, need to be known. Can you just tell a bit more about Skolkov, what it is, what type of uh, innovation center and how we can connect actually Norway is and uh, Scandinavian countries uh -huh. with uh, so huge uh, country yeah. Russia with that uh, Skolkovo is the uh, innovation center and the foundation for the support of innovation in Russian Federation for the moment we unified more than 2100 startups and I think 2100 2100, even more for the moment, startups uh, all over Russian Federation, which, uh, which go through very tough uh, selection process through the specially created expert panels based on the scientific approach. And the rejection rate for, this, for, for those uh, processes is more than 75%. So only 25% of the teams with the new tech can get through and become a school of resident. Why it's so tough? Uh, we are acting based on the special federal law and we provide for the uh, startups tremendous customs and tax benefits. So actually, that's uh, tax and customs paradise. They pay no VAT, no, they pay no property tax, no profit tax. Even social fund payments in Russian Federation that's paid by the employer, not employee, is cut in half. Uh, the choice criteria are the unique te uh, tech and the unique not in the sense of Russian f Federation uniqueness but unique worldwide. Uh, the team which is able to make out of the science real technology. The demand for this technology now or in the future from the real economy and uh, scientific basis of the startup has to be proven. So we are not taking the teams and the projects where it's a pure idea without any scientific basis. 70% of the startups we are helping came from the uh, university segment and they, that actually people got from the scientific uh, bench and decided to create the company. And uh, we have a wide specter of different technologies to support but in order to make the organizational uh, pathways easier, we split all the technologies in four main segments. That's Biomed, IT technologies, that is the uh, energy and energy efficiency technologies, and that's an industry for zero industrial technologies. So four different uh, startup types of... You know, the, if you're talking about the type of technologies, it's, it's much wider, because in each of those segments, we have so-called foresights, which confirmed by our Scientific Advisory Council, uh, led by the Nobel Prize winner, uh, Roger Korn Kornberg. Yeah. And that's actually the panel of the scientists and academists all over the world, which advise us which uh, direction or technological foresights would be more important in the next few years. And uh, that means that we have a plenty of different startups in different areas, and the number of the startups confirms it. But Remember, 2,100 startups with a rejection of two shots give the number of startups which are actually we are looking through is much bigger. Uh, on top of this, we are losing to around four, five hundred startups annually because uh, that's a risky business. I mean, that's dead end of the research, a team and dissolved, and then people are not getting forward. But we are not only replace those whom we are losing, but we are increasing the base around 15%, 15%. Each year, so we are growing. Do you do you support startups that are based in Russia, or do you support also startups that, that internationally? That's a very good question. Uh, as I already mentioned, we are acting based on a special federal law, and our tools of the support that's special customs and tax regime. We are providing financial support, the direct grants, non-dilutable, uh, non-returnable, non-reversible. And we have a uh, special acceleration and incubation program for the startups. I would mention that 50% of the startups are early stage due to the target of foundation. And uh, yes, we have the rule that startup has to be a Russian legal entity, but that's allowed that this startup 
can be founded by a Russian non-resident, either physical person or the corporation. And if it gets through the expertise, you get all the uh, support inst uh, instruments. Uh, what, uh, about, I would yeah. mention that about, depending on the cluster, from 7 to 15% of the startups we have in the portfolio founded by the foreign citizens. Mm -hmm. And you presented, you uh, everywhere you are going to different uh, summits, like Web Summit, uh, also in China, also in Slush. What's the also in bio, also in uh, Collision, bio, 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 yeah. yeah, it's I mean, all the big events. We do support our startups to present their tech and talk to the either uh, finance investors, venture investors, PE investors, or uh, PE private equity investors, or corporate investors, either corporate venture funds or. Uh, corporation as a, either as a strategic investor or maybe the uh, client for the startup because I said we are very much about deep tech and most of the product developed by Skolkovo startups are B2B or maybe B2B2C that means we need to help the startup to find the right client and all those meetings and events in fairs and fun is around to put them together. So actually you are coming uh, because your startups, it's much more easy to go to the international area now. Compared uh, to what? Compared to, for example, if there startups located in uh, Russia, when you're going to the web summits or you're going to different summits internationally, it's much, you also present that startups that are in your oh, yep. resident. Yep, yep, uh, I can explain that. Uh, definitely, I mean, the startups of Skolkova are independent companies. We do not have any equity in those startups. We do not have any stakes. Even more, despite we support this financially, we do not have any rights for intellectual property they generate. Because, I mean, the core of the startup is intellectual property. So, in what's, our the case. Purpose? so what's the purpose of being? That is the state support, definitely. We are actually bringing more people, we are changing the mind of Russians and Russian business direction to innovations. We are bringing more people who are interested in the research and development of product into Russian federations. We have a lot of repatriates, in fact. I mean, the Russian scientists who came back. Yeah. Uh, we, it's important, it's very important. We have a lot of international scientists as well, not only repatriates, but as well, I mean, the people who do not speak Russian at all. And uh, we also uh, help to Russian companies, small, big, to be known for the tech on the, on the international arena. That's our target. And we are helping them to be here, but we are helping them um, here, slash, yeah, yeah. or Web Summit. Yeah. Uh, but we are helping them not only, I mean, ideologically, not only as organizers, but as well, we are providing them some material support from this uh, side of the Russian government. We have uh, special financial program, grant program and we cover part of the cost of being here from the side of the Russian government. Yeah. Thank you very much, Kirill. Yeah, it was you. very nice. Uh, yeah, talking about Norway, yeah. I believe yes, that yeah. Norway business could find a lot of interesting tech in Russian Federation. And Russia is strong in the cybersec part, cybersecurity yeah. projects. Uh, we have the best teams in AI, artificial intelligence, yeah. in artificial vision and recognition systems, that the Russian teams are the best. No of those, Russian and Norway has a lot of com in common. And both the econ economy is very much connected with the energy resources. Yeah, especially on the northern part. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, definitely due to the structure of economy and GDP is similar, we have a lot of tech connected with oil, gas, digitalization of oil and gas processing stuff. And uh, even, I mean, we have few startups. I know that there are some implementations of uh, in uh, international oil companies of Russian, of, of Skolkova startups, which has some operations in Norway. What? So please come to us, talk with our startups, we are ready to help. Yeah, and there is a uh, S28, we are not finished. Uh, yes, there are quite a lot of uh, companies who outsource, uh, especially in Russia. Yep. Uh, there are many Norwegian companies, they outsource in Ukraine. Ukraine yep. is much more closer because of the visa process, yep. and also in Russia. Yep. Yeah, it's quite close, but uh, because of you, because of Skolkova type of uh, entities yep. that help, it can be grown up. So, uh, welcome uh, to yep. 
Norway yeah. and uh, Skolko is very big actually uh, in tidy. That is helping Definitely, for the you can find something useful among 2100 of startups, but no of those. As I mentioned, our network is much wider. That's not only startups who have been rejected. We know all the scientific institutions in Russian Federation. We know all the best scientists and center of competences. We know all the VCs around. We know all the technoparks. In fact, Skolkovo is running a regional partner network of technoparks with the startups situated in those uh, so, regions. So it means if a Norwegian startup, I would say, would yeah. be interested in... Because a to lot enter of Russia. Yeah. We are here. We are the best gate to come to Russia, definitely. Because we have a huge connection with Russian industry. Those are our partners. All the big companies are our partners. We have very good experience in commercialization of Russian and international startups. More of those. For Norwegian startups, we have a special program called Soft Lending. When the startups could come to us for free, we are providing free space for international startups in co-working. We are helping them and explaining them how to organize a local legal entity. We are providing them a range of different tax advisors, bookkeeping guys, law advisors, and more of those. We are giving them access to the network which they can find collaboration in Russian Federation, scientific institutions, other startups to develop this program or adopt this product uh, for Russian Federation. And then, so they can find the right guys to polish the product for Russia and we can help to, to sell it. And the last question. Yes. There are many people who still think that Russia is dangerous and Moscow is dangerous to come with a startup. Do they love football? Those people, uh, most probably not, because the people who love football visit the Russian Federation during football championship, and it was the success. I'm not very much in football by myself, but I know a lot of foreigners who first time came to Russia last summer, and they've been extremely surprised how safe and clean it is. So welcome to Russia, welcome to Moscow, and welcome to Skolkovo. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.